We're starting, starting, starting. We're here. Hey, what's going on? Hi, guys. What's happening today? Welcome to my live stream live session here on YouTube. Welcome to Traveling with Bruce. I'm Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome, everybody. It's Tuesday, March 13th, 2018. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> uh, first of two shows. Uh, this is my 5 o'clock Eastern show. I got another one tonight at 8. I can't get enough of this live streaming stuff. Gotta, 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 gotta do it. Gotta do it. I uh, hope you're having a great day today. Uh, I'm having a great day. A um, little behind here. Just forgot to mute my phone. Sorry about that. Okay, got that done. Um, greetings and salutations to all. And uh, thank you, uh, subscribers. Thank you, viewers. Uh, uh, it's great. I'm gl glad you're here. Glad you've been watching. Glad you're, I hope you're enjoying. Uh, I'm enjoying. Um, couple of uh, updates on YouTube uh, just to kind of get out of the way. Uh, still no monetization. <laughs> three weeks today. I've been without uh, without a paycheck for three weeks now. Uh, YouTube just, uh, you know, just haven't, haven't remonetized anyone yet. Uh, if if 100,000 channels get remonetized in one click of a button, which is kind of what I'm hoping will happen, that actually happens. YouTube will explode. I mean, YouTubers will go, oh, I'm back. I'm remonetized. You know, but. I haven't seen a single indication from any YouTuber anywhere that that's going on. Uh, and so it's just deadsville on the uh, monetization front. So, so I'm down to uh, simply super chat donations from any of you folks who are generous enough to send me a super chat donation where that dollar sign is on the bottom of your thing. You can send me a couple of bucks if you want, or you can go to my homepage and there's a PayPal logo there and you can, you can make a donation to me through PayPal and I appreciate all and any and all donations. And I've got a bribe for you. Well, as always, I have these sports medallions here that I'm uh, gifting a $10 donation to my channel. You got to, you choose your, choose your uh, medallion. They're about the size of a quarter. You can use them for anything. Uh, they're great for golfers, for ball markers, but they also fit on the back of cell phones. They can, you can stick them on, uh, on the keychains. You can put them on a business card holder. A lot of folks use them for business card holders. Uh, I found a couple more medallions here uh, the last couple of days. I thought I'd show them to you. I'll try to bring them in here. That up there is the U.S. Army. That is the, uh, what is that? Without the glasses, Bruce can't see. That's the Air Force right there. Hope you can see that. There's the Beatles. I got a medallion for the Beatles. I got a firefighter medallion. Anybody has a firefighter, retired firefighter? And then right there is the, uh, I believe that's the Navy. And then we've got, hey, beam me up, Scotty. We got a Star Trek logo. Now, these are perfect to put on cell phones. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. Yeah, Fire, Beatles, Air Force, Army, Navy. Um, I even have a, one or two Marines left if you want a Marine. Uh, but I've got a couple, only a couple left. So the first couple order, that's it. You get them. Otherwise, they're gone. And uh, and then the usual suspects are, are right here, including USC, UCLA. I have a number of other U.S. colleges, uh, but I don't want to show you 15, like five pages of these things. Uh, just send me an email and say, hey, Bruce, have you got this one? Have you got that one? And I'll be happy to send it to you. I'm sure we can figure something out. I also have a bunch of pendants. You know the pendants that go like for a necklace? They're about, they're about half the size of these. They're about the size of a dime. I'm going to say that. About a nickel or a dime is about the size of these pendants. NFL teams, NHL teams, Major League Baseball teams, got a bunch of those. So if you have a chain, like a silver chain or a gold chain, you want to have a pendant here for the Oakland Raiders or the, uh, the Dallas Cowboys or, uh, you know, whatever. I got I got a bunch of those, too. I just haven't got – just haven't bothered to show them to you because I just don't want to bore you with this stuff because I'm really here to talk about cruise ships, but I need donations. <laughs> so I have to bring it up. Sorry. Okay. Uh, on the channel, on the growth of the channel, it continues to grow. Um, another great night last night. Thank you to everybody who's uh, – Jumping on board, um, we had 1,305 subscribers when I went off the air yesterday afternoon. 1,321 right now, just as I was coming on. 1,321, 16 more overnight again. Uh, we've gone from like the 1270s in the last three, four days to 1320s now, another 50. Fantastic. I keep looking over my sheet because I've got it stapled here. So I'm really happy to see that. The, that's wonderful. Um, but, uh, you know. The YouTube thing is is full of uncertainty for those of us wondering when, how much longer. In the meantime, I just keep on. Sylvan, did you just do that? Sylvan, did you just do that? You are, 
uh, thank you very much, Sylvan. I just saw that ten dollar contribution to my cause from Sylvan in Delray. Uh, thank you. Uh, my begging is paid off. <laughs> uh star trek insignia please uh on its way <laughs> you'll see my email uh, in the description uh, on this video or la yesterday's video or the day before just send me an email message sylvan give me your mailing address and uh it's on its way uh, you got you got it <laughs> fantastic the star trek did it didn't it? It, it it tripped you over the edge you, you couldn't resist <laughs> or you know somebody fantastic thank you Sylvan um okay so let's uh let's say hi to everybody else who's here quickly because uh, i've got a few things i want to talk to you guys about today and it looks like you've got things to talk to me about so let's catch up with everybody hi everybody peter heckema came right in here a minute before i went on the air he was already typing saying hi bruce only 60 uh degrees sunny only 60 sunny degrees in tarpon springs florida today 60 not not great it must be all that cold air coming down from Canada. Uh, yeah, it's coming. It's coming from the Russians. They're giving it to us. We're sending it down to you, but we're we're sending it down to you in a sort of a, you know, in a refined way. <laughs> it's, it's sixty instead of twenty. Okay, we we kind of upgraded a bit. Uh, I just saw another donation come through. I think through PayPal, and I think Belinda did this. Uh, I'll check that in a double I'll double check that in a second. Uh, cause that one flashed in front of me and went away. Uh, he's saying it's coming down from Canada. At least we're better off than the East coast with all the snowy weather. Oh, and they must be getting hit. Aren't they? George McCrower cold here in the village of 67, but sunny George, welcome back, pal. Hang in there. Uh, grab one of your sweatshirts, <laughs> put a toque on. I don't know what you got to do, but you got to do something. Charles Jordan. Good evening. Bruce 56 today in Iva, South Carolina. It's only 60 down in Florida and it's 56. You only lost four degrees. Amazing. Uh, Wes Morrison, hi Bruce, another sunny day here in New Braunfels, Texas, where it is 70. Uh, Texas has got it. He's got the weather. Mary Ann Pratt, hi Bruce. Um, outside here in Bridgeport, Connecticut, snowing, stop. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> 52. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, okay. Uh, Mary Ann Pratt, hello Bruce, 52 in North Alabama, ready for spring. Norman Duarte, du Duarte is 30 outside here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Please stop. Tommy Eaton, hi, Bruce, 63 in Jacksonville. So, <laughs> got folks, that's cool weather. Scott Batchley, hi, Bruce, back again. Rainy, 62 here in Ventura, but it's raining in Ventura. This is good. This is good. Moisture in California. I'm glad to hear about that. Sylvan, hi, Bruce, and all. It is a cold 73 in the shade here in Delray Beach, Florida. Beats what I saw from Boston this morning. I saw a little report. Just uh, I watched like thirty seconds. This poor gal from the studio. They sent her out in the truck, you know, and she's wearing the the, the parka. <laughs> she's got the hoodie. She's got the headband. All you see is her face. Like the, you see her eyes and her face and her you know her lips and you know that's it. That that this is all. And she's in Foxborough, and it's howling a blizzard. It's howling like a blizzard is a howling out there, and uh, two feet of snow expected in Foxborough and they sent this poor thing out. Guess who's the newbie? She is. She's the newbie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. Uh, uh, thanks, Sylvan, for coming by. Uh, Debbie Emmanuel Hybrus raining through this weekend in Northern California, mid fifties today. Rain, rain, rain. That's good. Belinda C. Hybrus and everyone. 74 on the Gold Coast. One more sleep till Hall America to Fiji. One more sleep and you're going to Fiji. There's a small cycle out there, but hopefully it won't get us. So they, you're not going to head for it. I can tell you that right now. Your your cruise will avoid it and let it go wherever it's going. If you have to reverse the order of the ports or juggle them, they'll they'll do whatever they got to do. So yeah, you're not going into anything nasty. Trust me on this. It's not happening. Uh, Wes Morrison's Morrison saying your screen froze. Let me double check. Uh, let me see. It looks like it's alive to me, folks. How does my screen look to you guys? Uh, tell me and, and I'll see what I can do. There's Sylvan's donation right there. Thank you, Sylvan. That is awesome stuff. Star Trek coming your way. Yes, sir. Debbie Manuel. Yay, Sylvan. <laughs> yes, I did. He said, <laughs> yes, I did. Tommy Eaton. Hey, guys, don't forget to give Bruce a thumbs up. Thanks for all you guys. Uh, is Bruce here or am I hallucinating? Um, uh, let's see. Our cold temperatures are a result of a conspiracy. Jealous northerners have all set their electric fans on their balconies, pointing them to the south, and they blew the cold air towards us. I will be avenged. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, hey there, Bruce. Uh, Judy is saying, Hey there, Bruce. 
57 degrees and overcast in Sacramento. Uh, yeah, but it could be worse. You could be in Southern Florida. <laughs> Anna E.P. Aloha. It's 75 and due to rain here soon in Honolulu, but it's a warm 75 degree rain in Honolulu. Yeah. Okay. AJ Walsh, I'm back from Mexican Riviera Cruise. AJ, how was it? Talk to me. Uh, how was that ship? I think you were on the Ruby Princess, weren't you? Talk to us about that. Till then, no lag here. Good. AJ Walsh, 79 degrees in Las Vegas today. Great. Uh, great there. Norman, it's okay here live. Okay. The picture's good. Everyone's all right. Yes. Uh, uh, AJ, uh, tell us, how was the cruise? Uh, I think it was Princess Ruby. Was that right? Um, if I recall, and I'd be kind of curious to hear how it went for you. How was your food? How was your cabin? How was the cruise overall? What was your What are your thoughts? And uh, by all means, uh, share them with us. Uh, now, a quick check here. I have to do this because I thought I saw something happen here. Yes, a uh, $20 contribution came in on PayPal. Uh, while I was saying hi to all you guys and while Sylvan was doing his thing, thank you, Sylvan. Bel Belinda uh, sent me a $20 donation, and that's from Down Under, and thank you, Belinda, so very much. Um, uh, Star Trek logo? Uh, uh, Beatles uh, logo? Uh, what would you like? You get you get two. Just tell me. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, that is awesome. Take your time. Just let me know whenever you want to tell me. Uh, awesome. This is awesome sauce. Uh, what, a, what a start. Um, <laughs> she's smiling. Uh, Bo Stark seems this computer is stuck on one channel and that is the Bruce channel. That is the traveling with Bruce channel. And there you go. And I'll tell you, you can do it. You can be stuck twice today. If you want, uh, I'm on at eight in three hours. I'm doing it again. Uh, AJ Walsh, Ruby princess. Princess did a great job overall. I'm glad to hear that. I was on the Ruby Princess last year. Um, didn't have any serious complaints there. Debbie Manuel, yay, Belinda! <laughs> Everyone's cheering around. That's fantastic. Um, fantastic to hear about Ruby. Um, did you do any specialty restaurants, or did you just eat the uh, buffet and the and the main dining room? I'd be curious. And and if you did do specialty, which ones? Uh, how were they? You know, were they worth the money? That kind of thing. Um, How's your weather? How was the you know how was the weather for the cruise? Nice and warm, sunny. I hope. Uh, whatever info you can send us, AJ, we'll we'll take it and uh, just pass it on to the world. A uh, <clears throat> couple of news tips, uh, news information that's going on in the cruise biz. Uh, Ten days from today, uh, Royal Caribbean takes delivery of the Symphony of the Seas, and it'll be then uh, in service. You know, beginnings of it'll then be the largest passenger cruise ship in the world on on the seas taking pa paying passengers so that's what's happening there gaylene did you send me ten dollars as well gaylene just i just got the paypal i just saw that gaylene thank you so much i just saw that and just 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 tell me what medallion you want i'll take care of you that's awesome thank you you guys uh, man this is great <laughs> come on youtube monetize me too <laughs> add to it oh my goodness uh yeah so this ship symphony of the seas will be the largest cruise ship at sea for now. Um, I don't think anyone will usurp it for a couple of years, though. Uh, there is um, there is a 6,000 uh, passenger ship coming down the pipe uh, eventually. It'll be a couple of years out. It'll probably be through um, through uh, Ada Cruising, I believe it is. And that's that's a Carnival subsidiary in Europe for the German market. But I don't know if it'll be larger passenger count-wise. I don't think it'll be bigger in tonnage. Uh, so there'll be you know there'll be some discrepancy between gross tonnage, passenger uh, loads, and all, all that sort of stuff. We'll have to see. John Vincent is saying hi to me. Uh, hey Bruce, it's still cold in Jersey, 36, and I can imagine because north of you it's really bad. <clears throat> um, AJ Walls talking about that cruise, uh, the Ruby Princess. He's saying dining room food okay, buffet was better than other cruise lines. There you go. That's good to hear. Um, Debbie Manuel, oh what a happy payday! Uh, thank you so uh, thank you folks. Uh, I think two days ago I got shut out, and yesterday we had one. We, we wasn't that you, Debbie? Didn't you do that yesterday? Someone, did. yeah, it was Debbie yesterday. Uh, Debbie's throwing me uh, happy signals like this. Uh, that's great. Thanks, to, <laughs> and then Belinda saying that's Belinda doing that. <laughs> uh, uh, now who's this? Cal Callen Calendula Requiem. Uh, okay, I have no idea why this message is coming here, but it says uh, I wrecked my uh, PT Cruiser in the bike shop into a bike shop and I'm not allowed to own a motor vehicle in Kansas. Not quite sure uh, what that has to do with what we're talking about. Uh, Kellen, Julia, Requiem. Uh, 
you might be in the wrong channel. I don't know. <laughs> but welcome if you're here for cruising. If you want to talk about cruise ships, you've come to the right place. Uh, we'll see. Now, Alani uh, uh, Ulani is here. Uh, hi, Bruce and everyone. 65 in the Fort Worth area. Welcome back. And Sylvanus says, I can't find your email, not at the top of the chat. Uh, you won't find it uh, today. Uh, yeah, you're not finding it on my chat here at the moment. I haven't entered it. Sylvan, um, after I go off the air tonight, uh, on my description on this video, like, you know, the description below, it'll be there. But if you also go back to yesterday's live, you'll find that I uh, I put the email in the description there. So you can find it in either, either or. Um, so just look for that. But it's not in the, I didn't put it in the top of the chat today. I was a little behind my uh, schedule getting set up. <laughs> I'm running around, so you'll have it. You'll have it later tonight, or you'll have it uh, uh, from yesterday's or the day before's or the day before that. I've put the email uh, link in there, and you can find me. Doreen Chapman is saying is hi, saying hi, Bruce. Nor'easter coming to Nova Scotia. Yay! Yeah, yeah. Well, New England has it now. Boston uh, and Foxborough and so on, and then through Maine, Connecticut. Yeah, and then it's heading your way. Yeah, what a mess. It's like the what the third, fourth one in three weeks. It's ridiculous. But that's the systems right now. They're just churning them out one after the other after the other. Not great. Uh, other news uh, that I read today uh, in the cruise game, it came from Viking. Now, Viking has the Ocean Cruise Division, um, and they have the River Cruise Division. And on the Ocean Cruise Division, they are um, – uh, going to be 16 ships in size in the next seven or eight years. That's quadruple what they are now. So there are ships, a bunch of ships on order, and they will be at 16 operating vessels where uh, I believe they're going to maintain the policy 18 and older only on those cruise ships. So if you're older uh, and you want to get away from the grandkids and anyone else's grandkids, you want to be on Viking, um, cheaper to cruise on a Viking cruise on the ocean than it would be, say, Seaborne or uh, maybe Oceana. Uh, they might be a bit more, um, but it's all inclusive and it's balcony only. Um, nice, nice. Uh, I hear nothing but good things about Viking uh, from, you know, for what they offer. I hear very good things. 930 passengers, maximum capacity uh, for passenger capacity. Uh, very good service. Now, on the river side is the news is news that I found out today. Um, the river side is growing very quickly. Uh, the ocean side is growing at five percent. The river is growing at fifteen percent a year, um, and they've announced that they will be adding twenty four more river cruise ships to their inventory. And right now they're running sixty five, so they're going to go to eighty nine river boats between China and Europe. Um, quite interesting. Uh, two ships are landing this year in 2018. Seven are coming in uh, 2019. That's already been announced. The remainder uh, we'll probably hear about 2020, 2021 because they can you know, crank out so many a year. Quite interesting. I believe the ships hold about 180 to 200 passengers roughly uh, per and uh, again, it's all, uh, of course, uh, outside rooms only on the river cruise ships uh, with the, what they call French balconies. Well, that means is you get to slide open a balcony door, but you don't get to go out because <laughs> there's like a two inch little lip there with a with a grate <laughs> to keep you in. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's a wonderful way to slide open the door, let the fresh air in, um, you know, whether you're slowly floating down the river or heading upstream uh beautiful uh river cruising is is extremely popular but it's it's rather pricey um viking however has the largest percentage of north americans and of any other uh, river cruise line and they're also the single largest river cruise line um there's like two or three other cruise lines that if you add them together they don't have 65 ships combined and these these boys who are running the show are going even larger. Uh, oh, would love a Beatles, but Gaylene, you got you want Beatles, Gaylene? You're getting Beatles. You got it. I just saw that on my email. It doesn't show up on my live chat, but it's it's okay. I got you. Uh, but you can send me an email later with your address. Um, fantastic. So River uh, Viking River Cruises uh, really growing aggressively, and uh, uh, they're quite um, the, these cruise lines. These river cruise lines are quite um, known. They're well known for com combining airfare with the cruise because they're after the North American cruiser. They're trying to get us. They're saying to us, look, if you want to come over for a 10-day, 12-day, 14-day river cruise from Aust 
Austria, through through Switzerland, Germany, France, you know, Belgium, um, we'll include an airfare package for you and make it an all-inclusive deal. And we'll get you a couple of nights in the hotel before you come on board. We'll give you a couple of hotel nights after. And then uh, you've got yourself a, a 14, 16 day package, you know, however, however it works out. But you do the math and it's it's a lot of dough. It's, a, it's an expensive deal. And uh, I think the problem for, for pricing, unfortunately, is that they can't really discount it much because uh, when you operate in the Eurozone, you have to adhere to Eurozone labor practices, which are very good for workers. <laughs> <laughs> not so good for corporations unless uh, if they can't pass on the costs but in Europe everybody has to pass on the cost because it's the euro labor market and the euro uh, zone so people who want to take a river cruise in Europe are making a good wage anyway so they can afford the cruise uh, so it's like a self-fulfilling but here in North America if you're a dishwasher at Denny's you ain't going on no river cruise in Europe unless someone's buying it for you because you can't afford 400 a night uh, U.S. dollars for 14 straight nights. You're out of the league. So, of course, when you see the ads on television like I do, you'll see the ads for uh, Viking or, or, or Avalon or any of these guys, the folks enjoying those wonderful amenities on the cruise ships. Have you noticed the, uh, the look of the uh, passengers? Uh, on those river boat cruises, they, they're not 25-year-old kids. No, no. And they're not mom and dads with an 8- and a 10-year-old screaming and running around like this head cut off. No, no, no. They're our age. They're in their 50s and 60s, 70s, uh, retired, uh, upper middle class, got the dollars to spend on this kind of a luxury. But look, uh, 200 passengers per ship instead of 6,000. Um and you're you're really known for you know your trade between say May and about October. Oh, that's prime time. So you've got a nice wide long season to really go after the 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 the, the, the cruiser the the market. Uh, they do operate year round though, uh, but they'll try to tend to stay towards the south. But uh, I wouldn't want to be on a river cruise in November December. Eesh, a little too cold for me, especially on the river. Oh no, thank you. But in, in those prime months. Big bucks, and uh, they're getting them. They're getting the dollars, and uh, that's why twenty-four more ships. That's forty-eight hundred capacity per night to be added to this cruise line. One cruise line. The others aren't sitting around watching. They're adding cruise ships too, and these riverboat cruise ships are becoming even more and more sophisticated with more and more amenities because they're ta they're tailoring to our tastes, and uh, quite interesting. So, I mean, if I could afford one, I'd love to do it. But uh, the pricing between I've seen four to eight hundred dollars a night a person, uh, American funds rather pricey. But uh, spectacular scenery uh, through Austria, Switzerland, Germany, France, Belgium, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Okay, so that's that little story. Uh, let me just see if I caught up on everybody's uh, on everybody's uh, thing here. Um, loves to travel. I found your channel last week and really enjoy listening. Been on many cruises. Welcome, loves to travel. Uh, welcome, welcome aboard. Nice to have you here. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're here. You have any questions about cruise? You just fire away. Uh, Peter Heckema, Bruce, have you planned your next cruise yet? Uh, answer is no. Uh, well, I'm looking. Bob, oh, hey, Bruce. Hi, all. Uh, 58 in Pal uh, Pelham, Alabama. Go Tide. Uh, welcome, Bob. Uh, loves to travel, saying way too expensive for me. I'm a Carnival Cruise Line person mostly. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, nothing wrong with Carnival. Um, I've been noticing the last oh, few days. I, I've been looking around YouTube um, uh, on a number of, for a number of things. And um, uh, confession, uh, I watch other YouTubers who do what I do, or or kind of what I do, uh, because I want to see you know what's my competition like, and um, you know who's talking about what. Uh, when you're in the cruise game, you're trying to figure out what's going on in the cruise game. I'm not a travel agent. I know a lot of you have asked me. Uh, over the weeks, and those of you who are new, I want to be specific and let you know I'm not a paid spokesman for anyone. Uh, I'm not employed by anybody. I am a YouTuber uh, working out of my home. <laughs> this is my living room, and I don't. I'm not sponsored by any cruise line, a dot com website, a booking website, or a cruise line. I'm not a travel agent. I never have been a travel agent. Uh, I'm just an enthusiast of the cruise business. 
And uh, um, like uh, like others, uh, you know, there are others out there like me uh, who also, uh, you know, who are also uh, doing videos either from their homes and or go on a cruise, shoot a bunch of video, come back home, and then post a bunch of videos about their travels. And then there are the channels out there that are travel agents where the, the, the individual is actually a travel agent in real life, and that's their job, full-time or part-time, part-time, excuse me. And then on the side, they're running a YouTube channel. And some of them have done this for years, years and years and years, and they've got thousands and thousands of followers. And nothing wrong with that. Uh, if I were a travel agent, uh, I'd be trying to run a website, like uh, I'm trying to do a YouTube channel or a website as well. Anyway, um, I was watching a couple of videos the last couple of days that caught my eye. I've, I had a couple of uh, people mention to me the, uh, is it the Grand Bahama um, cruise? It's the cruise from from like uh, the from Florida to uh, Bahamas and back. It's like a two-nighter, three, two-nighter, uh, and how cheap they are. And it's an introduction into cruising and this kind of thing. And I, I saw some videos on them. And of course, uh, you're talking about a former Carnival cruise ship that was sold off by Carnival to this line. And they're now using it for two-night cruises between Florida and, and the uh, Bahamas. And uh, there might be, uh, might even be cruises now to Bermuda and back. And, um, and I'm looking at the, at the uh, uh, videos that some of these folks are making. And some of them are, are uh, okay. Some of them are, you can tell they're not cruise, they're not cruise uh, uh, YouTubers. They're not, you know, they don't specialize in cruise videos. Uh, but they've just made a, a video about their holiday. And uh, again, I find these interesting because they're amateur and they're not biased. They're, they're, they're literally telling you what, what their experience was, which I love. And uh, it got me thinking about my topic that's coming up here, which is cabin selection. And uh, these ships, the, the ship that we're talking about that, that's being used, was probably built in the uh, early 90s, late 80s, uh, no balconies, just outside uh, like ocean view rooms or inside rooms. And that's the way cruising was up until about the late 90s or so when the first few cabins started to show up, balcony cabins. But in the 2000s, everybody, every cruise line went with balcony uh, cabins. And, and we now know today uh, the Symphony of the Seas, you know, 6,800 passengers. I bet you're only about 500 will be inside. The rest of them will be ocean view or balcony uh, cabins because that's how the ships are now being built, designed, and, and uh, put together. They want to use that inside space for for uh, the workers, uh, the employees, for services, or for retail, or for uh, cappuccino bars, or bars, or restaurants, and you know, income-producing area that can make more money than an inside room on the cheap. So that that's uh, how that's come along. So anyway, I wanted to mention uh, talking about cabins here, um, uh, because when I see these videos of these older ships, it reminds me of what cabins used to be like. Uh, up until 10, 15 years ago. And now we're, we're so used to the new design. And yet today, uh, the new cruise ships coming out, the, the balcony cabin of a, of a 2018 cruise ship looks nothing like, uh, well, th looks a lot different, like I want to say it that way, than even um, a balcony from five years ago, eight years ago. It's incredible what is happening uh, in the design and the logistics and the engineering of today's cruise ships for the passengers. It's really something, and I wanted to kind of go into that. Um, just double checking here on a couple of messages. Samantha's here. Samantha Farmer, how are you? Cruisefulltime.com will sponsor you after we grow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. Uh, Desi Wagner's here. Uh, hi, uh, hi, Bill. Uh, I'm Bruce, but it's okay. You can call me Bill. You can call me Jack. You can call me George. Uh, but hi, Bill. I love cruising. Uh, thinking about a Southern Caribbean cruise next November, uh, I'm looking at Freedom at freedom of the Seas. Can you compare to uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines? Uh, good question. Good question. Anyone been on the Freedom of the Seas out there? Uh, be kind of curious. Uh, anyone have that? Uh, Randy is, saying, is, he, is here. He's saying, howdy from Paradise, California, where it's raining in a high 52. Pamela Jordan. Hi, Bruce and everyone. I'm late, but I'm here. Sunny and 53 Fahrenheit in Iva, South Carolina today. Hi, Pamela. How are you? Uh, loves to travel is saying in June, I did a, Nor a Norwegian, I guess a Norwegian cruise, Norway cruise. No, I did a Norway cruise on the uh, Kullingsdam. It was a nice ship. That's I think Holland America. Just wasn't sure. Just wasn't 
used to them serving you food in the buffet. A few items you could get yourself, but mostly they give it to you. Yeah, that they're this, they're right there. They handle it. Yeah, they handle the food there. That's true. Uh, Silo STV is here. Uh, hello from Seattle. First time caller, long time listener. Welcome. Uh, just booked the Norwegian Cruise Line Bliss. Uh, October Mexican Riviera, seven nights in the Haven. Nice, nice. That is going to be awesome. Silo, I need a report when you come back from that. You got to tell us how that was. That's fantastic. You might be my first viewer who is in that haven on the new ship. That's that's awesome stuff. Skyhawk is here. Skyhawk, 1987 Turbo, one of the neatest handles. He's saying, uh, hey, all, from sunny Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. Chili, 54. Missed the last few live videos, but my partner and I, uh, they have friends in from Portugal the last week for the past weekend. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, you got to show them around. You betcha. Fantastic. Uh, Desi Wagner. Sorry, Bruce. <laughs> it's okay, Bill, Bruce, George. You know, yeah. I've been called all kinds of things. <laughs> Sylvan Forrest, Freedom of the Seas twice and Liberty uh, of the Seas as well. So Sylvan has been on both shifts. Uh, Sylvan, what do you think uh, between, uh, you know, Freedom of the Seas and a Norwegian Cruise Line uh, cruise? Um, I guess it depends on the boat that, you know, he's thinking of with regard to Norwegian, right? Um, does the, Isn't Freedom of the Seas kind of about a 4,000 uh, passenger ship? Am I... My little high on that might it be more like 3,200, 3,800. It's not like the, it's not the Oasis class. It's not the big mega. Um, but uh, is it a Liberty class? I mean, how big is that ship? Uh, um, and how did you like it? Uh, if you were on it twice, I think you liked it. Uh, I think that gives it away right there. Uh, Peter Heckema is saying, we have always found the Norwegian cruise line nickel and dimes you to death. Yes. They, are, they started it. They started it, uh, Norwegian cruise lines. They were the first ones to do the uh, freestyle dining, they called it. Freestyle dining, uh, freedom to choose. Yeah, yeah, freedom to choose and pay for everything. But they would, they, the hook was, well, we're only $5.99 instead of $7.99, or uh, we're $5.49 instead of $6.59. We're, we're cheaper. Yeah, on the, on the upfront, you might be a little lower, but uh, by the time you add up the extras, there's the secret to success for Norwegian. Uh, they figured out, well, we'll give them a cheap deal on the room, and then we'll we'll get them on the uh, services. We'll get them on the on the up on the upsell, and that's what we're doing. And and that, and it's worked now for probably uh, close to 15 years since their new management took over uh, back uh, a little ways back. So yeah, that's the game, the name of the game. Now, all cruise lines are getting into this game. Uh, the so-called we're going to charge you extra for you know. Uh, all the little things you want, and there are more little things showing up all the time. We've been talking about that. We talked about it yesterday on even on Carnival, talking about the uh, the welcome drink uh, <laughs> when you get on the ship. You're on the you're in the pool deck, and the server comes up to you and he hands you this beautiful glass etched glass container thing, and uh, it's going to have a welcome rum and something in there, and uh, you order a couple of those, you get to keep the glass. You get, you get to keep the glass. Isn't that fantastic? You get to keep the glass. And uh, my viewer yesterday said, yeah. And I looked at my room charge that night, $22. <laughs> <laughs> so much for that $4.99 cruise you booked. <laughs> They're getting you now. So you got to watch for that. You got to watch for stuff like that and other things, just in case. Uh, so back to my topic about cabins, because we were talking about um, – what new cruisers need to know about picking the right cabin. Uh, this can be the make or break of your cruise. This can blow your cruise right out of the water, good or bad. It can make it or it can destroy it. And you got to know, you really got to know what you're doing when you're booking a, booking a, a cabin for the first time, going on your first cruise. Uh, even if you're a veteran, you, you make a wrong move and get the wrong cabin, you know, your fifth time out, 15th time out, and you'll just be so mad at yourself for being in that damn room that you didn't want or you, you weren't happy with. Um, uh, Sylvan is talking about uh, Royal Caribbean. I love Royal Caribbean. Freedom and Liberty are my two favorite ships. I also enjoy Norwegian, but I don't feel they nickel and dime you any more than the other cruise lines out there. Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, loves to travel. Nothing is free, she says. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Charlie Baum, a high Bruce Freedom has 3,600 and a promenade. Okay, so it's kind of that size. It's a good size ship uh, for like 
from 10 years ago, that was a big ship, 3,600 people, big. It, it outdid those 25, 2,800 ships uh, for a while. Then they moved up to the 4,200 range, 4,500 range, and now the, uh, the Oasis class. So, uh, you know, whoever's asking me about uh, which way should I go, uh, you know, you like a larger, you like a larger ship, uh, you're, you're in luck there. Um, uh, let me see here. Where is it? Was Desney as, was it Desi? Yeah. Desi was asking, uh, I, I love cruise. I'm thinking about a Southern Caribbean cruise next November. I'm looking at freedom of the seas. Can you compare to Norwegian? So, um, there are extra charges on the freedom of the seas too. Uh, you, you know, they've got their casino, they've got their specialty dining. Um, you know, Royal Caribbean has the same thing. Um, I'm going to say this though, that if I had to pick between the, um, I was on the Explorer of the Seas, just so, just to be upfront with you, which is not, I don't think it's the same class as a ship. I could be wrong, but I don't think it was, but I was not happy with the spa on the Explorer of the Seas. Now, if the Freedom of the Seas spa area is the same as, as the, the, the one I was on Explorer, uh, then I would choose another a cruise line because I, I I just was not happy with the the, the spa because I'm a big spa guy. Every day on the cruise, I'm in the steam room. I like to use their showers down there. I like the amenities down there. I want towels provided. I want you know all that stuff. Um, I leave the cabin to my wife and she gets the bathroom to herself and it's covered with all her makeup and stuff. It's all her stuff. I only need a toothbrush. I take my shaver with me down to the spa. I shave there, and that's it. Uh, the only thing I keep in the room is my underarm stuff, and it doesn't take up any room. Uh, but with Norwegian, I've been fortunate to be on two ships where I've enjoyed the spa twice, both times. I was on the Jade, and I was on the Epic. And in both cases, I really enjoyed the spa, and my wife did too. Um, very nice. And so I pick it over the Royal Caribbean line because of the spa. I mean, that, that's how important the spa is to me. So again, it's it's what you want out of it, Bill, uh, or Desi, I'm sorry, and I'm calling Desi Bill. I, I'm getting him back. Uh, so Desi, it's up to you what you know, what kind of amenities you want and and uh, whether the spa is a big deal to you or not. Uh, but again, I'm a day use guy. I like to use the spa facilities on a daily basis. I'm prepared to pay extra for it. Uh, on Norwegian, you do have to pay extra. On Royal Caribbean, I don't think I had to. It was included, if I recall, but I wasn't uh, all that impressed with it. Uh, I guess I got what I paid for, uh, nothing. And so uh, I did use the steam room. I did use it, uh, but I wasn't happy in there. Uh, and um, it, it, it seemed very industrial. I guess I'm going to say very industrial surroundings for me. Where in Norwegian, the spa was a special place with the uh, atmosphere uh, of a spa to relax you uh, you could smell the aromas were, were also pleasing uh, because they had those, you know, those, those spa type aromas going. Um, the lighting, uh, music, if there was any in the background, was also soothing. Adult only. Um, and people had to pay to get in, which meant very few people were there. Love that. So that worked for me. Okay. Just so you know. Okay. Uh, coming back up forward to my, uh, my messages. Um, uh, back up here, back up here. Okay, Charlie, uh, Freedom, yeah. Skyhawk, would a, would a mid-ship uh, cabin be best with a balcony? Good question. Um, it depends on the um, – okay, I'm going to say it this way. Yes and no is the answer because uh, some folks just love to be at the front of the ship. They just want to be up there. Others love to be at the very back, and I mean the back back, the end of it, where they can look out the back and watch the, uh, the wake behind them, you know, as they're sailing along on those sea days. But if you're at the front or the back, you're on the, uh, you're going to get this action more than if you're in the middle, right? So I kind of like being in the middle, front third or back third, like in that area there. So that half, that half of the ship, maybe I should say, a quarter from the middle, a quarter forward, a middle, quarter back, anywhere in that range, that's good with me. Um, and I like, I like being higher because I want a view during sea days that is a good view. And then at port... Uh, I want to be higher up. If I can be up 14, 15 stories up, great. Because now I'm 150 feet off the waterline. I'm 125 feet off the, the pier, 12-story building kind of thing. And I've got a view. And I love that from my balcony. Because uh, I bring my binoculars and I bring my cameras. And I love that. Okay? So there you go. For, but for motion, in the middle of the ship uh, will, will help with that. 
uh, loves to travel. I always have to get an inside, but I would uh, like to get a balcony. And uh, yeah, you know, loves to travel. I got to tell you that uh, uh, sometimes you can get a killer deal on a balcony, a really good deal. It just depends how you shop. Even on uh, like if you're a carnival cruiser, uh, keep your eye open through like vacations to go.com. That's my favorite website that I love to use for scouting prices. Um, they'll show you their prices on a per night basis, any class of cabin you want, either one cruise line or all cruise lines, depending on where you want to be. So if you want to look up cruising, say, this November, uh, Caribbean, um, seven-day cruise, balcony rates, any cruise ship, you can get you can be that general. And then you can organize the pricing from low to high. And then you can see who's offering you the best deal for balcony or inside room, whichever, where you want to go. I mean, you can look at all the very the variances, of course. Uh, but that'll help give you an idea of, you know, who's charging what. You might be surprised that, you know, for five or 10 bucks a night more, you get to go to a balcony uh, on on either Carnival or, or on Princess or on Norwegian or whatever. Just depends on the time of year. I think the week before Thanksgiving is a good one. And the week after Thanksgiving, I'm talking U.S. Thanksgiving. And then early January, every year, the cruises are the cheapest in the Caribbean in early January. So if you can make it, you know, take a look. Uh, Samantha Farmer loves to travel ma ma many ways to get a free upgrade, possibly. The Silvo, the Silo is saying, uh, uh, like Mrs. Silo. Oh, Silo, like Mrs. Silo. Okay, Silo. Uh, we did the Haven on the Jade. The room was great, but the service was meh. Bliss has the Haven Lounge and Restaurant. Amenities look much better. Okay, uh, curious to see how that goes. I really like the Jade's um, spa for the men and women. Really liked it. Um, loved it. The, the heated ceramic loungers, really love that on the Jade. It was fantastic. I took, a, I think, 11-day cruise in the Mediterranean with my daughter. Had a great time. That was a wonderful, uh, wonderful itinerary and a great ship. Really enjoyed it. Samantha Farmer, nothing beats the star class on Royal Caribbean. Uh, well, you know, if you can afford it. Yep, same thing. Belinda, can't wait to check the spa on Holland. Uh, yes, I'm uh, I'm waiting for you to report back to me on that. <laughs> I think you'll like it. Desi Wagner, thanks all. You're welcome. Uh, Silo, uh, my wife spent almost 2000 bucks on, on that dang spa on the Jade. Glad I had the unlimited drink package to cushion the blood. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is the drink package runs out on the last day of the cruise, and then about a week later, you're back home, and uh, the, the effects have worn off, uh, hopefully for the better, and then the bill comes in from the cr from the credit card company. Ah! <laughs> but at least during the cruise, you were able to numb the pain somewhat, right? Oh, my. Yeah, that, that spa, can, you can spend money on the spa. I, I just love doing the, uh, the seven-day access or whatever it is. Uh, if it's about 100, 120 bucks for, for the, for the, I'll pay it. And uh, I use that thing probably twice a day. I'll get 14 uses or 12 anyway, you know, 12 uses out of the spa for that cruise. And that works out to 10 bucks per, and it's worth it. That's cheaper than the casino. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Uh, Belinda, I shall go on the tour. Hopefully mom will get it to her. Yes, the, the, uh, the, do the spa tour and check it out, Belinda. Absolutely. Uh, check out the spa tour. Then you can see the facilities yourself. And then, and then uh, hopefully you'll, you'll want to do it. Cam is uh, saying, hey, everybody. Hey, Cam, welcome. Belinda is saying, hi. Uh, Belinda, I'm packing while watching you go through checklist today. Right on. Uh, Skyhawk is uh, saying, uh, how can you tell where the lifeboats are on a ship when uh, booking? I've seen videos uh, where people get the balcony and right below them are the lifeboats. So there goes the view. Okay. Uh, I would say um, I would recommend you uh, – do a YouTube uh, video, first of all, on the ship, like a ship tour. But um, um, if, you're, if you're looking at, say, deck plans, uh, you can do it on the, on the cruise ship line, like the cruise ship website itself. That's what I'm trying to say. The cruise ship website or Vacations to Go, they have deck plans for whatever ship you want to look at. Um, uh, uh, let me think a minute. You'll also get a photo of the ship. Uh, on vacationstogo.com, so you get kind of a handle on where the promenade deck is, where the lifeboats are. Um, but I would say if you're if you're thinking of say cabin number, let's say nine nine four four ninth floor nine forty four, go to YouTube and uh, enter that room number and the name of the ship and do a do a search for a video 
see if anyone has done a video either on the ninth floor or your specific cabin and they'll give you that you'll see the you know they'll walk around in the room with the cat with the camera and then they'll head to the balcony and they'll show you their back and, and then you can see where the lifeboats are are they just above you are they down there then you know that gives you a handle but i'll tell you if they're saying if the deck plans are telling you that the balcony units start on deck seven and go up to deck 12 or 15 or whatever the number is guaranteed seven or eight are going to be very close to the lifeboats so just you know keep that one in mind and you know stay above that i, I that's why i like to go higher i just like to go higher i'll tolerate noise from above a little bit but uh i don't want to be under the disco of course so you got to watch that plan too and that's part of my discussion today is where is that cabin located relative to above you and below you uh you know what are you around and near now a balcony cabin is an outside cabin so that you don't have to worry about interior noises so much but um lifeboats don't make noise necessarily when they're just there on the davits but um if you're on deck 15 and the pool deck is on 16 uh be careful where on 15 you are underneath the pool underneath the running track underneath the kitty play zone uh the teenager uh hangout area um you know that kind of stuff right if you're underneath the buffet you'll be fine if you're underneath a special restaurant you'll be fine um and even if you're underneath uh like a, a, a promenade area up there where people have just their loungers and stuff should be all right because you're not at the pool side uh area type thing but uh just watch for that keep your eye open on the uh <laughs> on those deck plans to help guide you okay uh let's see uh, uh what do we got i'll have to try that loves to travel uh silo is saying where's belinda going belinda's going on a cruise silo she's going on a uh, on a holland america cruise uh i believe out of australia uh leaving tomorrow fantastic uh, samantha is saying uh uh she's telling she's telling uh, skyhawk uh, get the app cruise mate uh cruise mate uh it has full deck by deck view and you can find other people on your cruise uh olani Ulani is saying some of the ships will say obstructed view for the balcony in the cabin description. That's a dead giveaway that you've got a, a lifeboat in front of you or just below you or just above you. You have an issue there. Excuse me. Sebastian is here saying, uh, hi, Bruce, 16 days until my Costa Easter cruise and 25 before the symphony uh, one. I will try to make some periscope oh trying to go on live and, and and try to do that that'd be great i'll look forward to uh hearing from you as well and uh yeah let us know about both of those sebastian that'll be great um and skyhawk is thanking uh, samantha and uh ulani peter hekama is saying here one thing we did on uh one of our norwegian cruises was take the behind the scenes tour got to see the engine room bridge and kitchens crew quarters etc really interesting cost was 20 bucks and that is a bargain uh peter that is a really good deal uh, i don't know if that exists anymore i hope that was really recently for you but uh, i have heard of some cruisers saying that these tours are upwards of 100 150 a person uh, in some cases so not sure if you know if they're even more sophisticated than that or they're just a blatant ripoff i don't know but uh, that that is a great deal. If you can do a behind the scenes for twenty bucks, forty bucks, I'd pay it. I would do it. Uh, lots to see down below. Sebastian is saying my worst cabin was on the Jade. We couldn't stay more than two nights. It was a real nightmare. How about that? Uh, I was uh, my daughter and I when we were on the Jade. We had an inside room, and we just used it as a bedroom, just a place to crash, and uh, it was fine for that. And I used the spa as my shower. And bathroom area for shaving and and all that every day uh that's the way i ran that uh, cruise aj walsh uh, saying uh, i was very surprised uh friends won in the casino on the ruby uh, then put a quarter of it back <laughs> i won money on the dicey horse racing <laughs> yeah take the money aj when they're handing it to you take the cash and run <laughs> the best time to win in the casino is the last night kind of you know although if you're really down it hurts um of course the best time it's the best time to win every time but um, if you can win on the first night 
you might be too loosey goosey the rest of the cruise. You got to be careful. <laughs> uh, Belinda saying, going to Fiji on the Holland America cruise ship. She's going to Fiji. Fantastic. Chevy and First is here. Hey, y'all. I have an un, I have an obstructed view, the balcony, at the very front of the ship, seventh deck, 194 days until the cruise. And uh, you know what? A cruise is a cruise. Uh, but uh, what the hey? Uh, you're, you're on it. You're on it. Uh, Fiji, that sounds great. Silo is saying, yeah, it, that does sound exciting. Just exciting. Um, some other things about cabins that I wanted to mention today. Again, I was comparing uh, cruise ships from before to now. But to, to, to upgrade you folks or just to kind of get you familiar with where I'm at here, where my head is at, there are cruise ships right now in service that were built in the mid-90s, early 90s, uh, that have been refurbished and are still going strong. And while these ships have come in for dry dock upgrades, uh, they've certainly had, if, if a cruise ship is 20 years old, uh, it, it's it's not on its original mattress anymore, you know, in your cabin. You're not on the original mattress. They've changed those out a few times. Um, they've probably changed out the televisions from the first version of TV that was on that cruise ship from 1992 to today. But I will caution you and make you aware of the fact that if you're on a cruise ship that was built in 92, 98, in 2000, um, there, these ships are competing with ships coming off the line now from, you know, 2016, 17, now 2018. Today's cruise ship coming off the line is a completely different animal in the cabin and on the bridge and everywhere else because the amenities are being added in right at the beginning. And so if you book a cheap cruise, like a real bargain cruise, whether it's an inside room, ocean view, balcony, you know, whatever but the ship is 15, 20 years old, um, I will, I, I don't want to warn you, I don't, I don't want to scare you off, but I want to uh, educate you on the fact that there may be limitations in the cabin that uh, brand new cruise ships uh, don't have, the kind of limitations they don't have. And, and I wrote some of them down. I'm just going to read them off here. I've got to put my glasses on. Um, uh, first thing is the television. Um, if, you're, uh, if you've got kids, or if there's two of you and uh, you're like me, uh, by about 9, 10 o'clock, you're out of gas and you just want to crash in your room and relax for a while, maybe hang out on your balcony, but probably watch a movie until you fall asleep. <laughs> uh, the television is important. Um, the size of the TV matters. And here at home, we're spoiled rotten here at home in our homes now. Uh, all of us have, you know, generally speaking, a high, high, high percentage of us have big old screen televisions at home now because of how cheap they've become. Well, on cruise ships uh, from 1995 to, to, to 2005, uh, if they did have flat screens, they probably had glorified computer monitors originally installed. That might have been 14, 16-inch, 19-inch screens in the corner of the room, diagonally away from you. Uh, and then as time went on, they would have done upgrades on the dry dock situation. They would have taken off these old, smaller, screens and put in the largest flat screen they could fit in the space that they had, which might limit you to a 22 inch uh, screen, maybe a 24 inch screen only. We're on a brand new cruise ship. If you, if you instead, instead of taking that bargain cruise for 549, you go for 599 or 649, you're in a cruise ship that's only two years old. And the flat screen television is right in front of your television across or on the wall, right in front of you. And it's a 42 incher, uh, and you know there's the foot of the bed plus two feet of space to walk by the bed, and the flat screen. And so you got a nice big picture right there where you want it, rather than lying in bed and doing this at this tiny 24 inch tiny television set. So again, I, you know, if you're you're out dancing in the disco and uh, you're having the time of your life, or it's a booze cruise, who cares? You don't care about your TV, uh, but if you're kind of my age, you might. So I, I mentioned that as a uh, one of the things um the second thing is storage things have really improved for passengers for storage uh uh my first cruise was on the ooster dam and we were happy with the ooster dam we had sort of a walk-in type closet area we had our bathroom our suitcases when they were empty went under the bed uh 
out of sight, out of, the, out, of, out of everything, out of mind, everything, great. And as the cruise went on, we had more and more dirty laundry. We'd pull out a suitcase from below the bed, throw the dirty clothes in the suitcase, shove it back under the bed. And on the last night, you know, we brought out the suitcases and then folded our dirty laundry in a foldable way so that we could pack everything back in our suitcases and head home with the dirty laundry. It was a one-week cruise. We're not going to do laundry on board a one-week cruise. Uh, but today, um, these cruise lines are, are becoming quite sophisticated with engineering uh, for uh, unique ways of enhancing storage. Uh, it's not uncommon now for a bathroom to be in, in effect two pieces. You have one side is the bathroom with a shower stall and a mirror. And on the other side of the room is where the uh, toilet is. Uh, and the sink might even be outside of that in the, in the um, bedroom area where there's a vanity. And so they've divided the bathroom into various spots. And now you put your bathroom pieces where they belong, your shampoos and conditioners in the shower stall, um, who knows what in the, the, the commode, and then your, your wife's makeup and everything in the, uh, in the uh, room where the sink is and the vanity is. Lighting is improved, of course. Mirrors are everywhere to make the room feel airier and larger. Um, there are now storage cabinets higher up uh along the roof line like along the ceiling line of these cabins rather than just you know four walls like a wall a wall a ceiling and the front and the bed and the only place to store your stuff is in the closet area it's all changed um another another improvement that they've made uh, is also in the um power outlet department uh cruise lines know we travel with our phones our tablets our laptops our, uh, our digital cameras, perhaps, all kinds of electronics. And we can't have just one plug beside the bed anymore. And um, they really would rather we don't bring a power cord, plug it in and have six items into that power cord, because now we're draining that one socket uh, heavily. Um, they'd rather just give us three or four sockets on each side of the bed, a couple of sockets at the vanity, uh, you know, this type of thing. So now, now that's like seven or eight places to plug stuff in during the evening and we can keep our phones or our, our, our laptops or tablets by our bedside if we wish uh, to keep it handy. Cruise ships are going also with uh, wireless everything, including an app for onboard everything. So you'll carry your phone with you wherever you go because the, the cruise line knows it's probably your primary picture taking and video taking instrument on your cruise. You'll take it everywhere. And if they offer you a wireless Wi-Fi anywhere on board, for a $15 daily fee or $9.99 or whatever the price, it'll come down. It's high now, but it'll drop. You'll you'll take it. You'll buy that deal. And you'll have your cell phone with you. You can watch a Netflix video off of it. You can text to your friends. You can Instagram right on the ship live from wherever because these satellite systems are now up in the air uh, linking in these cruise ship networks. It's quite going to be quite amazing. So that's a big change as well for for us that's why we have to have these plugins in our cabins so again uh, that's another big change um the couches uh big changes in the couches they used to be just you know fold out or not now they're uh you know really nice fold out couches uh you know it, it was a point in time where you had a cabin and it was okay for mom and dad but those poor kids if they were tiny yeah it was all right but if they were teenage years not so comfy well now the the couches with the fold-out bedding, really nice bedding in the couches. Um, and you're also having now fold-down um, bunk beds out of the ceilings of these rooms to take advantage of that air up there that no one's using. And so mom and dad are sleeping this way, the kids are sleeping that way, and oh, it's the engineering is amazing, and everybody has room to relax and sleep and you name it. When mom and dad come back late at night, if they've been out watching the show and the kids are already asleep and they're units the parents don't have to worry about climbing over them either they have easy access from the door to the closet to the bathroom to their bed without jumping or walking or crawling over those poor kids you know, so cots that they used to roll out that would be in the middle of the cabin and i don't know how you got by it all so that's a lot of changes in the uh, in the cabin department but for booking the right cruise and not making a mistake cabin location is everything if you're a bargain shopper like i am uh, and you can't just take the suite, which is going to be on the top, or the aft suites that are really nice, you know, bigger, best views. 
I'm looking for a balcony room for two at a price of an inside room if I can get it. Um, then I'm going to uh, I'm going to be in the smallest balcony units available. But the cruise lines have engineered these small balcony units to perfection, and they just seem to get better every time a new ship comes off the line. Um, but you still have to be mindful of where that cabin is with regard to the deck plan that uh, you're looking at, and whether you're right underneath the pool right underneath the disco, right underneath the, the kitties splash zone. Um, you got to know that. Uh, don't want to be underneath the exercise floor where they're doing the workouts with, <laughs> with those drill sergeants starting at 6 a.m. <laughs> going to whatever hour. You want to keep an eye on that. Okay, let me just see what uh, what we have here on uh, messages. Um, Skyhawk, are you monetized yet? No, I'm not monetized yet, uh, Skyhawk. I'm still surviving off of uh, donations. And got a couple today, and thank you, everybody, who's helped so far. Absolutely wonderful. Um, Sylvan saying, I have experienced every kind of cabin, from suite to inside. I prefer an inside, and that way I can cruise more often. Best cabin yet was on Freedom of the Seas with a view of the Royal Promenade. Well, there you are. There you, there you go. You know, Sylvan, that's the thing about an inside, too. If you, you book the inside, you get a killer deal on that, you've got cash for something else. And... Uh, Makes cruising more affordable. You're absolutely right. Bring in a maybe it's an extra cruise a year. Maybe maybe two. Charlie Baum folded. Uh, folded. Not sure what he means. Loves to travel. I've been looking into going on the Carnival Horizon in November. I, I would really look into that. Yeah, I would look into that strongly. Um, you wanna you wanna try to get on that ship. It'll have all the latest bells and whistles that Carnival has. Uh, uh, from what I've seen and heard so far, I hear good things. So I'm quite curious. Galen is saying, hi, Bruce, seven, summer, seven degrees Summerlin. I'd like a large inside room. <laughs> and you can, you can get a large inside room if you, uh, if you need one for say, uh, for, you know, let's say you need you use a walker or you're using a wheelchair handicapped, uh, you know, you, you can get them with the handles, you know, all this type of thing. Uh, absolutely. Some of the cruise lines have a larger inside cabin for that. Uh, a silo is saying my first cruise was on the old Chandri line on the uh, Americanus now scrapped. It was 1988. The ship was built in 1955. She was like old and rocked like crazy in high seas. Had skeet shooting after. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Yeah, they, they don't do skeet shooting anymore, and they don't throw. Uh, they don't shoot golf balls into the sea anymore. Uh, they've signed treaties over that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these old timer ships. Oh, they don't. They don't. They certainly don't build them like that anymore. No way. Judy Anstess is here. Just curious. You said you were on the uh, Norwegian Jade, right? Uh, yep. Uh, it sure seems. It sure seems small compared to the Epic. About half as big. Seems tiny for that transatlantic cruise I'm going on next month. Suggestions? <laughs> well, the Jade. The, the Jade is a 900 odd feet long. Um, 100 odd feet, 130 feet wide, I think it is. And so, you know, it, it was a large cruise ship for its day. It's got stabilizers, uh, so she'll ride quite nicely, I'm sure. Uh, uh, 20, what, 2,400 passenger capacity. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't feel cramped on it. It was actually uh, similar in size to the Oosterdam. That was my very first cruise uh, for Holland America. Uh, so it's in that class. Uh, so it's a good size ship. Now, Epic, yes, the Epic is <coughs> massive. <coughs> I've used photos um, in my headers for my thumbnails where I have a shot of the Epic uh, in Cozumel sitting beside the um, Norwegian Sun. Uh, when I was in Cozumel, I was on the Epic, and we were parked beside the Sun, which is exactly the same as the Jade. It's a sister ship to the Jade, and it's stunning. Just Stunning the size differential. It's amazing. But yet, I love the Jade. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the Jade more than the Epic uh, overall. Like, overall, I did. But uh, uh, but uh, the, J the Jade has its advantages in certain areas. Bigger spa, of course. They had more square footage to offer. But the Jade, I enjoyed very much. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think you're going to be fine, uh, Judy. I think you're going to be just fine. Uh, Charlie Baum, uh, you're, you're packing... You're, oh, you fold. <laughs> Charlie, I get it. I get it. You fold your clothing when you're going home? What are you, nuts? What are you, it's dirty laundry. What are you folding it? I just throw it in there to hell with it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't travel alone, Charlie. 
uh, I travel with the missus and uh, I do what I'm told. <laughs> and, and Charlie, uh, I mean, you, you've seen my videos now. You've, you've watched me a few times. Okay. So, you know, my wardrobe is rather um, limited and not all that extensive because, <laughs> you know, it's polo shirts and comfy pants and some shorts and, and, and polo pants, you know, like, like, you know, khakis. What am I packing? A quarter of a suitcase? That's all I got. The rest of it is, you know, who's, and it better be just, oh yeah, yeah, I, I don't touch it. I, I don't fold it. Not me. Oh no. Oh no. Because I'll screw it up. I'm not going to screw it up. And I'm going to keep that myth going for as long as I can. Because she ever figures out that I could take care of her clothes, I'm a dead man. I don't want to do that. So yeah. Chevy <laughs> first, looking at my deck plan, will be under the bridge. Are they noisy on the bridge? No. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be quiet, calm and quiet. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Uh, Silo, uh, we had 12-foot seas on the J. Didn't feel a thing. Cabin was on the 14th floor. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we didn't run into anything terrible, uh, but we were smooth, too. Very smooth. I enjoyed it. Uh, had a great cruise on the Jade. Um, Epic, we were in uh, good weather for the Epic as well. Uh, but uh, uh, Explorer of the Seas, who went through a big old cyclone. Nasty. And it was, I was sick. It was not good. Uh, Charlie Baum, still, I'm single. See, I knew it. I, I, yeah, see, Charlie, you can do whatever you want with your clothing. Guys, you know, no one's going to stop you. But uh, yeah, it's all different. <laughs> I love to travel so funny. <laughs> That's why I do the show. <laughs> it's the interaction. I love this. So much fun. Uh, Bob O'Shevin first. Uh, if it is noisy, head up uh, for the head up for the lifeboat. That's right. If that cat if that bridge all of a sudden becomes really noisy and there's a lot of yelling going on, like mayday, mayday <laughs> for the lifeboat station. Don't even wait for the announcement. Just go to your lifeboat station with your preserver. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you're, you'll be one of the first to know uh, if something, you know, is going on that shouldn't be going on on the bridge. But, yeah, if it's all quiet, then it's all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the, another amenity that uh, – other amenities of new cabins. Um because of these design enhancements and finding out ways to store stuff and to change the bathroom from just being one little corner unit of the cabin and everything's in there, you know, so if one person wants to shower and the other person's got to go, we got us a problem, Houston, because the, the, the shower-er is here and the toilet is there, uh, that, that, that doesn't work out. Never works out, even between husband and wife. Uh, but now they've got the, you know, the commode over here, the shower unit over there, and uh, they put the vanity in the room so the mirror doesn't get fogged up from the shower, you see. Um, you, you dry off in the shower room, and then you come out with your towel on, put your robe on, and now you're at the vanity. The hubby can be reading the, uh, you know, the to-do list on the cruise, the today's uh, activities, while sitting on the commode. <clears throat> you know, letting everything just sort of flow. Um, everybody's happy. No one gets in anybody's way. Now, one of the enhancements they've done in that, with that uh, that vanity now out in the in the uh, room, is they've extended the counter all the way down a uh, big part of that room uh, towards where the couch is, and now they've included another amenity for cruise ship passengers: coffee machines. Coffee machines. And they can also just heat water. And they provide you with tea in your room. Make your own cup of tea and or make yourself a cup of coffee from, you know, the one serving whatever at a time. And the strategy from the cruise line is simple. Why should we have all of our staff running around like crazy in the morning with teas and coffees for room service if we just give the passengers their own machine? They can make their own darn cup of whatever they want, cut down on the number of room service calls, and after they've had their coffee or their tea, they'll then leave the room and go to the main dining room for breakfast or the buffet or whatever. Same thing in the evening, you know, not a bad strategy. And if you add hot chocolate mixes, one way to go. Now, if you know that you're going to be on a cruise ship that has a coffee maker on it and you're a repeat client, um, you may want to bring your own coffee. 
perhaps, perhaps not. You may want to bring your own hot chocolate, uh, you know, pouches, uh, and or your own kind of tea if you're, especially if you're a decaf drinker like my wife is. Uh, keep that in mind, right? But that's another um, add-on that has happened in the last uh, probably five years. Really new now and becoming more and more standard fare. These cabins are getting more, more um, kind of use it, use it yourself oriented uh, to to in effect. They're saying, look, if you want room service, we want to charge you for that now. So people don't want just a cup of coffee brought to their room, and the ship would rather you not walk to the buffet, go to the station there pour two cups of coffee, and then walk through the, the cabins, you know, 250 feet to your room holding two cups of coffee because inevitably you're going to spill some. Now, strategy, though, uh, is bring your own coffee mug, travel mug that can hold hot and cold beverages. So if you want a fresh cup of coffee in the morning, just regular cup of coffee, one of you volunteers to get up and go to the buffet with the two travel mugs and you go to the drink station in the buffet, lo load them up and then walk back with the lids on them. You're not going to spill it. And you're bringing basically two cups of coffee, the equivalent of and, and or tea back to your room. And you're not using their maker, the coffee maker, but you've done this and it's made for you over there. That's a strategy uh, where I've seen other folks who get those coffee cards, the bistro coffee cards, good for say 10 bistro specialty drinks uh, during the cruise for say, 30 bucks or 33 bucks or whatever the price is. So instead of buying one for four dollars, you know, you're buying 10 for 30, that type of thing. <clears throat> Folks are going to the uh, to the cappuccino bar with their travel mug all washed out, and they're saying, put my latte in this. I'll have a large soy latte, no foam, whatever it is, and they'll just pour it right into your travel mug. And now you got yourself your latte, and you can head for that promenade deck out there and walk around the promenade deck, sit down on the bench, watch people walk past you, watch the waves out there, and enjoy for a good 30 minutes your cappuccino, your latte, your Americano, whatever it is you're into uh, from the specialty coffee shop. Little tips like that. Uh, of course, cold means you can bring your cola on board, and during the day, you put two cans of Coke or energy drinks, whatever you put in there, and a couple of things of ice, a couple of cubes of ice, and you're set for a couple hours. you got some uh, nice uh, liquids anywhere you want to go. Um, let's see here. Richard Kormaska, hey, Bruce, uh, uh, didn't have to bring our life jackets to the initial safety talk. That is new. Yes, that's right. Uh, that is, they're changing that now. They're not making you do that anymore. Samantha Farmer, uh, do you like the new brands, uh, the new bands that replace the cards uh, to do stuff on the ship, like Royal Caribbean has the wow band. What do you think, folks? I haven't experienced it yet myself. Uh, what do you guys think? Is it uh, handy or not? I, I can see with the card, you know, you left the card in your bathing trunks and uh, you jumped into the pool. <laughs> Did it go to the bottom and you didn't notice? Uh, someone might knock on your door later and go, I got this for you uh, with the band that's there. Um, I don't know. It's a it's a question of uh, what what uh, what you like. Um, uh, what do we got? Matt saying that style of bathroom doesn't work. Uh, cruisers don't like it. Hey, interesting. They don't like this split thing and all that. Oh, nice. Okay, Debbie Manuel, have you I have to leave you all? See you all in a few hours. Okay, Debbie, see you at eight o'clock. Have a good one. Uh, Silo is saying the Norwegian Bliss has a Starbucks. Woohoo! Yep, yeah, yeah, they they all do. All Norwegians have uh, Starbucks. Uh, and everyone else at least has uh, a bistro Starbucks-like spot. Uh, great. Uh, love that. Loves to travel saying, I hope the Horizon has Guy's Burgers. They are so good. I believe they do. Uh, I believe they've been making a big to-do about that, uh, saying, oh, yes, we have Guy's Burgers. Uh, loves to travel. Uh, bye, Debbie. Uh, Betsy Lane is here. Much easier to open door when hands are full if you have that band. Yeah, because if you have the band, you only have to scan it. You know, even if you're holding stuff, you scan it. And then you can get into your room. Good, good one, Betsy. Right on. I loved using the Wow Band. She liked it. There you go. Uh, and of course, the, the the Wow Band, just like your card, uh, will either allow you or deny you access depending on where you are on the ship. You just put it over a scanner. If the, the door doesn't open, you're not allowed in there. Your band isn't programmed for it. Your room, you know, are not. You're not in that high end, so you can't get up there. Uh, Matt is saying uh, or saying here, NCL had a massive problem with the Epic. Uh, there were supposed to be more in its class 
But so many complained that they started fresh with the end Norwegian breakaway, changing the layout. Yeah, you know, you look at the Epic, and it looks like they took a giant box and put it on the top of the ship in the front. I mean, it's just so un-aerodynamic. Uh, not great. And then there were probably other issues. I had a few my, of my own that I didn't like about the Epic, um, uh, and, and particularly the layout of the uh, floor planning in the public areas and how the casino was right in the middle of the ship, in the middle of a major thoroughfare for people. And it was a pain, especially on sea days, because on sea days, all 4,200 passengers are on the ship. They're not going anywhere. And there's a couple of hundred, three, four, five, six hundred of them in the casino smoking. And you want to go from here to there and either got to go through the casino or up a level or down a level or two. What a pain in the rear end. And uh, the casino was, was tough to get around and the machines in the way and the smoke in the air. And it wasn't pleasant. And for the gamblers, not pleasant for the gamblers because people are always bumping into your back. You're trying to play the slot machine. And there's always people running around. and Yeah, they didn't like that. Um, uh, Matt saying makes a cheaper price for the sailings now, though. Uh, I guess. Uh, Silo saying Epic made the Pontiac Aztec look good. <laughs> I remember that Pontiac Aztec. Yeah, that was a box, wasn't it? One heck of a box. Johnny Baum saying, watch out for suntan lotion on room cards. Yes, uh, you get that greasy stuff on your magnetic strip, you're done for. You got to get that thing cleaned off with some Windex or something or trade it in and get a new one at the services desk. Yeah, because <laughs> they could get all slicked up and then they're all useless. Not good. Well, anyway, I'm going to call it a day here. Pamela's taking off, and that's my cue. If Pamela's going, i got to go. Uh, I'm back on the air at 8 o'clock. Uh, that's in an hour and 45 minutes. I start my second show. So I'm going to say my goodbyes for now. Uh, Silo, why do you got to pick up the Pontiac Aztec? <laughs> Skyhawk Turbo is asking. <laughs> I had one. I love my Aztec. I could carry four Huskies in the back. No problem. Well, good for the Huskies, I guess. Good for you and the Huskies. Yeah. Guys, thanks for watching me. I hope you gave me thumbs ups today. If you if you didn't, uh, take the time and drop me a couple of thumbs ups if you can. I think I got 34 going, so fantastic. Thanks for the super chats today. Thank you for PayPal donations today. Thank you, Beatles fans. Thank you, Star Trek fans. Uh, bring out, let's find some fire department and Army and Navy and <laughs> Air Force fans. <laughs> we'll keep these medallions coming. I got medallions to send you guys, and uh, I appreciate all your support. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys at 8 o'clock tonight. I'm going to take off for now. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today on my 5 o'clock chat. I'll see you tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern for Prime Time Super Chat or so Prime Time Live Stream with Traveling with Bruce. And we'll, we'll talk cruise ships. How about that? We'll talk about some stuff on cruise ships and it'll be fun. Okay. Thanks, you guys. If I don't see you today, I'll catch you perhaps tomorrow. 5 o'clock Eastern on Wednesday, as always, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, take care, guys, and thanks again. We'll see you. Bye-bye.